first reaction to being a member of the Horizon League? Uh, it's very exciting. I mean, you can't you can't put into words the opportunity that this is for Open University and for us. But you know, I'm going to talk about men's basketball uh, today, but for the whole university, as you've heard in all this. But from the men's basketball standpoint, this opportunity is unbelievable. And you just look at this. In the last five years, the Horizon League's been in the championship game two of the five years. You know, it, it, that's just a pipe dream, you know, to think that that could happen. But it's happened in this league, and now there are expectations that you can do that. You can get to the Final Four, you can get to a championship game in this league. So that, that in itself changes the whole game. It changes recruiting, it changes everything. For our, the, the second thing that sticks out is that we no longer have to go for the league tournament to the other side of the world. Our fans have never, ever gotten to go to the league tournament. They've, you know, they've always had to watch it on TV. We'll take a few busloads out there, students. Our students have never participated in March Madness unless we went to the NCAA tournament. And then they got to do it, you know, in, actually in the NCAA tournament. But they never... For us, the the greatest thing is winning that league championship, that league tournament. That's when you cut nets down, you storm the court. Our, our students never got to do that. In this league, if you win the regular season, you get to host the postseason tournament. And for me, that is as big as it comes. And even in this league, if you don't win it, and say Detroit wins it, it's a 20-minute drive. Or if Cleveland State wins it, it's a three-hour drive. So now there's our students can get in, in cars, get on buses, get in vans or whatever, and get there and experience March Madness. And that's that's how you build your program. You know, recruits want to come to places where the students go crazy and they fill the arenas and things like that. So you know, the big thing now is win a league championship and host, and that that will change the ball game completely. So those those are the two things that really stick out in my mind. Uh, 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 you know. In recruiting wise, we're going to be able to recruit Chicago, we're going to be able to recruit Marquette, we're going to be able to recruit Ohio. Places that we try and get in and, you know, you have a little, now, we were talking to a young man last night in Chicago who all of a sudden now we're in his final three. And I will tell you if this Horizon Link thing hadn't come through, we wouldn't be. Uh, we are talking to a young man in Miami, in Milwaukee, and we've got a really good chance and now his dad called this morning and said, okay, it's official, yes, you know, all right, well. That means that means a lot because now three of three of their league games he's going to be able to drive to you know, uh, uh, the game in Chicago, the game in Marquette, and the game in Green Bay, where the families and friends can go see that. So this changes recruiting too. As you look at the idea of this, what's been the biggest obstacle for you looking at what you're coming and what we need to do to make this reality? I mean, were you involved? In I was not involved in initially when this we talked as a university where do we want to go where do we want to be years ago this is where we wanted to be and I was involved in that but in the process the last month or two months I've not been in it's been a Tracy Hoot, Simon Dover, Gary Rusty adventure I've not been in involved in that at all. I'm not in any way, shape, or form. Everything was done was by them. How will you just change your scheduling? We all know that you're scheduled way up for a number of reasons. I think it's good, it is going to change. Uh, you know, for me, the difference between the Horizon League playing-wise and, and where we're coming from is, and our fans have to understand this, in, in the league we just came from, we, we beat one team 16 straight times. Uh, another team beat us at home this year for the first time in 10 years. You know, that's not going to happen in the horizon. It, you know, thinking that you're going to get, you know, we've gone seven straight years with double-digit wins in league play. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult thing to match in this league because top to bottom the league is very, very competitive. So I think, you know, scheduling wise, we're going to have to back down a little bit. Of, of, you know, I don't think we're going to be able to play seven or eight of those games. 
I really think we're going to have to back that down. We're going to get, need to get. We should be able now to get more home games. Up. I mean, that that should be something that we should be able to do is get more home games because of the, you know the league affiliation. Um, I also think RPI wise, I don't have to build the RPI as as well with the non-league schedule as I have in the past because the league RPI, I think the five-year average of the Horizon League is like 12 in the country, where the five-year average of the uh, Summit League is probably in the 20s. I don't know exactly. but So uh, I don't have to build my, my RPI. So, you know, you always want to build your RPI the best you can because when the league tournament, uh, when the NCAA tournament comes, you're seated by that. So it's very important to have a good RPI. I hope I'm making sense. Sure. Okay. Will it affect, uh, you obviously have an ambitious schedule for next year. You know, yeah. are those all still... Go, those are contracted games. I, North Carolina, I, UCLA... We open the season at North Carolina, and then we go to UCLA, Gonzaga, and Cal are our first four. And then we have a verbal agreement to play Michigan State in the Palace. We have not signed that contract yet. We're still working on that. So, um, so talk about changing the schedule that's in the future. Yeah, next yes, year. Yeah. I have. I didn't know what was going to happen, so I saved two games because I didn't know if we were going to play 16 league games or 18 league games. So I've our non-league schedule is set for the 16. Now, now uh, that means I've got to schedule two more non-conference games. So we'll probably we'll probably add one more big boy, <laughs> you know, one more type money type thing, and then we'll probably try and get a home game. What's it going to be like playing Detroit twice every year? And for maybe your fans and maybe recruiting-wise, too, because of the market that's here? Well, you know, in all honesty, we don't recruit head-to-head -head against Detroit very often. It's one or two players every couple of years. Uh, and, but I'm sure if, if we beat Detroit four years, four games in a row, we're going to use that. If they beat us four games in a row, they're going to use it. I mean, I think, sure, that, that's going to play an important part in it. Um, but I will tell you that for our fans to know who our opponents are, to know that it's a 20-minute drive, to, that, that, that rivalry, seven years from now, eight years from now, people are going to forget what caused this rivalry, you know, the last 10 years. They're going to forget about that. They're gonna, and all they're going to know is two schools within 20 miles that aren't going to like each other very much are going to be going at it. And, and that's what makes great rivalry. Yes, yeah, if you look at other schools on the high level, level, Central, Western District, have that going on, and Michigan, Michigan State have that going on, to have a, a partner who's that close, I mean, and you think that there's some potential to stir some money up. You know, our rival was, in the early days, was about, and that was, and they beat the crap out of us for so many games in a row, and then we started with beating them. But they were the rivalry was they were the best team in the league, and if we were going to become the best team, that's what we had to do. Then our rivalry became Oral Roberts, and they were real good, we were real good, but, but our fans couldn't get in their cars and drive to Tulsa. And so it, while it was a rivalry, and while those home games were meaningful, very meaningful, it's still not what what this is going to turn out to be. And don't forget, I think the Valpo thing also. I mean, I, I think Valpo will turn into a a very you know. I mean, our game with Valpo have always been one possession games, you know, how did that happen type of game. And, and the last, you know, we've played them three years in a row and it's been a one possession game three straight years. Um, you know, so uh, I, I expect that to happen. I think, you know, Cleveland State could become a, I mean, Cleveland State's a very good team that's coached, very, very good coach. I, I suspect that's going to become kind of a rivalry too. So. You know, and that's three hours. So, I mean, I, I think it's going to be more than just Detroit. I think that you're going to see our fans. You're going to see fans in the stands at Cleveland State. You're going to see them at Valpo. You're going to see them down at, at Wright State. And that is what's exciting for me. With your experience of playing against Risley schools, how would you describe the style of play? Well, we're going to be much different than what's in that league. Um, that the league that you know, I, obviously we we knew this could happen, so we've watched a lot of film, and it's a it's a big, strong Big Ten type league. You know, they they're going to defend. And, I mean, Butler got to the national championship game based on their defense, and 
rebounding. And so it's a league that's a little different style than our league. We, you know, our league that we were in, we were very good in it. You know, we won it our first year. We won it and, and everybody said, how'd they do that? Well, they played different than everybody. And so now it became a shooter. And then when they got the Dakotas in there, it became a shooter's league. High scoring, lots of point league. Well, the horizon's not that in any way, shape, or form. It's a get in you football level. You know, when a kid drives to the basket, he's going to get knocked on the ground, and that may not get called. And so that's going to be new for us. But it's also our style is going to be new for them too. I mean, it, it's we're not going to change. We're not going to change our style. We're not going to say, okay, we're going to go. No, we're going to run. We're going to shoot the three. Travis Bader is going to be. He'll get his 300 threes. And we're going to get up and down the floor and play. And, and, you know, it may be more difficult to do that because the, the other team's not going to want to do it with us. So it'll be, it'll, that'll be the interesting thing on how we do in the first year. We'll probably come down to that style of play. Have you had any contact with uh, anyone from U the University of Detroit since the, no. in the last couple days? No. How did that travel, especially in the tournament, affect your team? You know, did, the years we went 17 and one in the Summit League, I kept telling people, you don't understand. I mean, nobody had ever done that before in that league. And the reason isn't because the teams, the talents weren't that good. You know, our team wasn't that much more talented. It, that travel just knocks you down and wears you down. I mean, you're getting on an airplane on Wednesday and you're on the road till Sunday, and you're going and you're going into remote places where it's really cold and it's desolate and you know and it's it, it, it's a mental and a physical wear down on you. We, we were the outpost of the league. We were the farthest eastern point. All right, and you never want to be that in a conference that's spread out like this. So that in itself was for those two years to go 17 and one. That's how good those teams were because you had to fight through that mental and physical fatigue. Well, I'll tell you what. This move is about the whole university. This move is about the o Oakland fan base, Oakland Nation as we call it, everybody calls it their nation. Oakland Nation, they've got to step up too now. This isn't just about me stepping up and our team stepping up. This our fan base have we when we play at Detroit this year, there better be five hundred to a thousand students that are down there at that game. All right. They, I've heard all the talk that, you know, now we got we gotta shut up and do it. And and our you know, the Grizz gang can't just show up for the big games anymore because every game's a big game now. It can't be, oh, we're going to beat them so we won't show up tonight. You know, we'll show up when, they, when we're playing the best teams. No, this has got now, they've got to step up too. Our student population's got to step up. Our fan base, our ticket base has to step up. And they and it's a big step up and they've got to do it. All right? And so when we play UAD next year at UAD, there better be a thousand students. All right, that whole group, you know, when we fill up a home game and it, it wraps around behind their, the visitors bench and around the pep band and all that, all those people have to go to U of D because they've been clamoring for this for years, but we're here now. So I've got to do, I've got to get, we've got to be good, i got to do a great job, but our students have to do a great job too. You talk, you talk about the expansion in recruiting. How about the Horizon League Network too, for recruits Huge. to be able to Huge. watch games online and have the ease of accessibility? Right. We're recruiting a kid in Milwaukee. Uh, we're playing at Cleveland State tomorrow night. Hey, hey, we're on at 7 o'clock. You can watch us. You can see how we play. You know, that's it, it, huge. Anytime. In this day and age, anytime you can get on TV or on any type of media, I mean that's how kids are today. It's a, it's it's, it's a media, it's an electronic world. The, tra the travel must be big for the, the families of the players you recruit. Exactly, because now they can get in their car and drive to Dayton. They can drive to Valparaiso. Well, it's going to be a problem for me because now I got to worry about tickets. Because when we go when we go play at South Dakota State, I got 50 tickets and I, you know, I'm giving them to the people in the hotel. Hey, will you come? Well, you come. You can't wear blue and yellow. You got to wear black and gold. Can you come cheer for us? You know. And uh, of course, all the you know all the vendors and everything in the hotel are taking the tickets. So <laughs> uh, now I got parents coming. So yeah, it's going to be a huge difference. Yeah. Um, I think that we have to evaluate that. I think we have to probably get a little bigger and stronger, yes, but you know, we in the last five years we've been really good. 
and we've been big. Our teams, our our best team was six eleven, six ten, six six. You know, next year we've got six five on the perimeter all the way around. Uh, we got six ten in the post. So, you know, I think we're I think we're talented enough. I think we have to get deeper. You know, I think that's one of the things we have to do is we have to get deeper. And then the other thing we need to do is we need to get the Gordon Hayward or the, the, the Howard, the Matt Howard. That was the difference. That's what took Butler from being, you know, a sweet 16, win a game in the NCAA tournament to the Final Four. Because of their, their right, they went and they finally, Matt Howard could have gone to uh, Indiana, Purdue, any of those schools, and he chose Butler. And then he, he they, they were difference makers. They took all those other really good players and turned them into a Final Four team. And that's our next step now. I've got that. I've got the players like Butler had them. Now i got to get that Matt Howard or I've got to get that Gordon Hayward. And that will, yeah. Obviously, I mean, getting great guards is, is not easy, but getting... Forward, uh, skilled forwards at the mid is never easy. You think the ease not with size, be, right? Do you, do you think the ease of that is, is going to be increased a little bit? I think the four man.